Hi, I'm Tim. Keep watching this video as I'm going to show you how to make use of one of these as a smart home wall control panel for Home Assistant. So keep watching this video and I'll show you how. And it's not just opening a web page. There's two apps you'll need for full control, but I'll show you in this video how to do everything. Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be setting up my Samsung Galaxy Android tablet model A7 to act as a control panel for Home Assistant and this is episode one of three in the series. Apologies in advance if this video takes too long um, but I would recommend following it through right to the end as it just tell you all the steps you need to do to get the control panel operational. So firstly um, we have the tablet and it's already powered on um, and it's connected to my local Wi-Fi network and I'm also as you will see on the screen at the moment logged into Home Assistant as an administrator and that's using the normal internet browser on my PC. Um, what we first need to do is to go and create an additional user which we will use on the tablet to connect to the Home Assistant server. So first we need to create an additional user in Home Assistant. So to do this we need to select settings from the left hand side menu. Once you're in settings we need to go down and select people and this is where I'm highlighting at the moment and hovering over and you'll see that it says people manage who can access your home. So click on this and then at the moment all I have in there is an administrator. You may have additional users if you have previously created other people in there before um, but in this case for me I've just got administrator. So what we need to do is click on add person in the bottom right hand corner. Then when the new person box appears we need to give this person a name and to distinguish it from other people I'm going to be calling the username panel. The picture box you can leave blank and for allow person to log in you need to click this button so that the slider goes to the right which will then bring up an add user box. In the username you can leave that as panel which I have done as you notice it's changed it to all lowercase characters um, as login usernames in Home Assistant are all lowercase. So for password I'm going to give it a new password I've already created a password so I'm going to just copy and paste this into the password box and also into the confirm password box as well. Now please make a note of the password as you will need this when you are setting up your Android tablet. Um, by the way in this case I'm using a Android tablet and it's a Samsung Galaxy a7 tablet. It doesn't have to be a top of the range one just that works reliably. So moving on after you've copied and pasted the password or typed it in in the password box and confirm password box you need to select the option for can only log in from local network as you only want to be allowing this user to log in when on the local network. For example in this case it's going to be a local network um, because the tablet is connected to the local Wi-Fi network. So you need to click that so that it puts the dot slider to the right and it changes blue and also for administrator you can leave that as greyed out so you do not need to enable administrator. Once you have done those options you can then click on the create button and then click create again. You will now see 
in people that there's two users created one for administrator and the second one which we've just created for panel so another thing you need to do now is to ensure that home assistant has a static ip address which helps with connectivity from the tablet so to do this you need to click again on settings then from the menu options that appear on screen you need to select system then when the new pop-up menu appears with all the different options in it you need to select network and underneath that it should say external access disabled so click on network this will then bring up the host name box and in the host name box you'll see I have home assistant you may have something different if you have previously named your home assistant instance um, something else but mine is just called the default of home assistant and I suspect yours probably is too so leave that as it is but under configure network interfaces you need to click the arrow next to the IPv4 option and then make sure that you have a blue dot in the static option this will then ensure that you have a static IP address you will see that mine already has a static IP address of 192.168.1.145 forward slash 24 mean it's meaning it's a slash 24 network um, I won't go into details about different network types but make sure yours has a IP address and also a net mask in there yours will probably be something like 192.168.1 and then it will have three other digits after it and then forward slash 24 again so just make a note and ensure that you have a static IP address set and also make a note of the static IP address that you're using when you've done that just click the save option and this should then bring you back to the list of options that you see on screen at the moment so when it's done that that's all we need to do into home assistant for the time being so we'll minimize home assistant we'll leave it open on the pc but just minimize it for the time being and then what we'll do is we need to go to the tablet so as you will see on screen at the moment I've projected my Android tablet onto my PC screen so make sure you have your tablet handy and what you need to do is go into Play Store the Google Play Store and in the search apps and games box at the top left corner you need to type in fully kiosk as in fully and then kiosk k-i-o-s-k -K, and press enter to search this should then bring up some search results and what you're looking for is fully kiosk browser and lockdown here you'll see that it's the second option down and what you need to do is click install on fully kiosk browser and lockdown this should then install it on your Android tablet wait until this is done then you can close the Google Play Store and you will see that now we have fully kiosk browser installed then what we need to do on the Android tablet again is again go into the Google Play Store and this time in the search box we're typing home assistant companion app and here it will bring up the search so click on home assistant companion app and this should then bring up the search results and what we're looking for is home assistant and here you'll see that it's the second search result option so again on this click install for home assistant and this is actually the home assistant companion app which actually connects to your home assistant server so on the tablet to confirm we are installing fully kiosk browser and also the home assistant companion app so we'll just wait for home assistant to finish installing on the android tablet 
then we'll exit the Play Store now that it's been installed and we'll click on Home Assistant. Then you will see on screen at the moment we have Welcome to Home Assistant Companion. This app connects to your Home Assistant server and allows integrating data about you and your phone. Home Assistant is free and open source home automation software with a focus on local control and privacy. So just click continue. Now it's saying select your Home Assistant server. Now here it has brought up a search result for my Home Assistant server and it's called Home and underneath that it's got HTTP and the actual static IP address for the Home Assistant server. So I'm going to click on that. This should then take you into your Home Assistant login page. Then in the username box, we'll type in the new user that we created. If you recall, I didn't call it control, I called it panel. So again, we'll click login and here we go. We now have connect to Home Assistant. And here we have the device name which is the device name for my Android tablet. And then we have an option for enable location tracking. Now enabling this sensor will allow the Home Assistant application to track your location and report it back to your instance of Home Assistant. Ensure that you enable background access to location, otherwise we cannot enable location tracking. Your location data is sent directly to your Home Assistant instance and is never sent to a third party. And this is disabled at the moment, so I'm going to leave it disabled as I shouldn't need location tracking as the tablet is uh, going to be fixed to the wall in my home eventually. Um, so it's only going to be controlled from my actual home and not remotely. So in this case, we'll click continue. You will now see that it's actually loaded the Home Assistant server overview page. So this confirms that it's connected via the Home Assistant companion app to the Home Assistant server. So now that we've done that and configured the companion app, we'll now go back to Fully Kiosk and we'll configure fully kiosk. So let's exit that app and then we'll click on fully kiosk browser. Now you'll see on screen that we have fully kiosk browser and we have quick start settings. Now it's asking for the start URL. Now the start URL is the actual URL of your home assistant server. What you need to do for the start URL is type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash home assistant dot local colon 8123. So to confirm for the start URL, it is HTTP and not HTTPS and then it's a colon forward slash forward slash home assistant dot local colon 8123. 8123 if you recall is the actual port number that home assistant server runs on. So for then for the next option full screen mode this should be enabled and as you can see it's enabled by default. Show action bar can be left as disabled and address bar can also be less left as disabled. Then once we've confirmed those options, we'll click start using fully. Then we need to type in the details for the new user that we previously created in Home Assistant on the server. And if we recall, the username is panel in lowercase, and then I will paste in the password and then we need to tick keep me logged in. Then click the login button. This has then loaded the Home Assistant overview page. Then what we need to do 
is swipe from the left hand side from the screen to bring up the fully kiosk browser menu and various settings. So for fully kiosk browser this is actually the free version. Um, it does actually give a watermark in the corner of the screen um, and I would recommend purchasing the actual licensed version which is only at the moment about eight euros so it's worth having the full version without the watermark but for this demonstration I'm just going to keep using the free version um, but enable it so that we can have all options available. So what we need to first do is in settings and go in and select web browser settings. Once you're in web browser settings you need to enable pull to refresh this is disabled by default so click on it to move it across to the right and change it to blue so enable pull to refresh should be enabled then we can go back to the previous menu for settings and under device management select this then for unlock screen you need to make sure that this is enabled as you can see it's already enabled by default and for keep screen on which is the first option you need to make sure that that is enabled which it is by default then scroll down and for launch on boot you need to enable that option then we need to go back one menu position so that we are in search in settings and then we need to scroll down to remote administration. Here under remote administration you need to click this option and then enable remote administration. This is disabled by default so enable this option then underneath that we need to select remote admin password. Here we need to set a remote admin password and make sure that the password is secure. Do make a note of the password because you'll more than likely need this in future. So when the remote admin password box appears, create your password and either type it in or paste it in there and click OK. This is actually a password that's required to actually use later to connect to fully integration. So please make sure that you have a note of the password somewhere safe. For the next option down for remote admin from local network this needs to be enabled so that you can only have remote admin on your local network and not remote administrators from the internet. So then once you have made sure that that option is enabled you can then hit back and keep hitting back and then you will see that we now have permissions required box so we can click OK on that then this will then bring up the permissions box on your Android tablet and you need to keep going through and allowing all permissions so that fully kiosk browser has full control and is able to access various things. This will then enable fully kiosk browser to have the advanced options enabled as well. So for allow fully kiosk browser to take pictures and record video while using this app allow fully kiosk browser to access the device's location while using this app allow fully kiosk browser to record audio while using this app allow fully kiosk browser to find connect and determine allow and i'm going to keep going through and allowing all these permissions allow click activate this will then take you into the settings and apps again so now what we need to do is allow all these permissions for fully kiosk browser 
as you will see in the settings option that's appeared on screen. This is, these are the settings for the actual Android tablet and not fully kiosk browser. So here you'll see fully kiosk browser is in the list of applications and we need to move the marker across so that it's blue, then click back, then enable it again, fill a kiosk browser, click back, keep scrolling down and again we're looking for fully kiosk browser, enable this option, click back and finally we now have the Home Assistant Overview dashboard loaded on screen and as you'll see the watermark is appearing on this please get a license because this is the actual free version of fully kiosk browser so as I say for about eight euros you can purchase the full license which will get rid of that watermark um, I'll be making a purchase later on after I've finished this video and as you'll see at the top right corner, it's also saying plus features have been activated. Now these plus features are useful, so I would recommend using it or just put up with the actual watermark on the screen. So now that we've done this on the tablet, we now need to go back to Home Assistant and add an integration for fully kiosk browser, which is the native integration in Home Assistant. So let's go back to the Home Assistant server. As you will see, I'm about to load, and here we are in the Home Assistant server. So now what we need to do to add the integration is go back to the overview screen, and then we'll click on settings so that we're starting these uh, from scratch. Then once you've clicked on settings, you need to select devices and services. Then from devices and services, you need to select add integration. Then when the integration search box appears saying set up a new integration, we're going to search for fully kiosk browser. And as you will see, it's already brought up fully kiosk browser so select this integration, then enter the host. Now the host is the IP address of your Android tablet so that it can link up to the actual Android tablet. So to get the IP address, you can either go into your Unify network if you have it, or whichever router you're using. If you go into your router and actually look up the IP address of the actual tablet or the other way to do it is to bring up the tablet again so let me just do that for you and here we are back at the tablet screen so we should be able to force close this and then if we go into settings as you will see I'm doing now then under Wi-Fi, you'll see that the Wi-Fi network that I'm connected to is listed. Then when the window appears with current network, you'll see that there's the gear or the cog icon. Click on this and it will then bring up details of the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to. Then if you select the view more option with the down arrow and you will see that it's saying IP settings. Now scroll down to the bottom of this page and you will see that there's an IP address. Now this is the IP address of your Android tablet. So make a note of this as this is what we need to put into Home Assistant in the fully kiosk browser integration. .2.142. As you'll see, the IP address of my tablet is 192.168.2.142. So now that we've done that, we can just come out of these options on the tablet. And then if we go back to the Home Assistant server in our 
browser on the PC, we can then type in the IP address of the Android tablet, which we've just noted down. This then enables the Home Assistant server to talk to your Android tablet. So we also need the password to access it, and this is the password that we created earlier, just a few moments ago in Fully Kiosk Browser in the Remote Administrator option. So this is the password that we used and created in Remote Administrator when we enabled the Remote Administration option in Fully Kiosk Browser on the tablet. So then once you've copied and pasted or typed in the password, click Submit. You will now see that after entering the IP address correctly and the password that we created in Fully Kiosk Browser under the Remote Administration options, it's now saying success, created configuration for Tim's Tab A7, we found the following devices. Now what you can do here is actually give the tablet an area where it will be located. Um, at the moment I'm not going to do this, um, I'm going to create my areas later, but if you have an area that you have already wanted to allocate it to, you can select this now. Then once you've done that, just click Finish. This has now linked up Home Assistant by the Fully Kiosk Browser integration onto Fully Kiosk Browser running on the Android tablet. So now that we have Fully Kiosk Browser installed on the Home Assistant server, it can now link itself up correctly to the Home Assistant control panel on our Android tablet, both using the Fully Kiosk Browser applications. So now the next step is to actually configure our smart plug so that it keeps our Android tablet charged up. You don't have to use this option if you don't have a smart plug spare at the moment, but I would recommend getting a smart plug so that you can uh, have it plugged in to your Android tablet so that you can have it automatically charged when it requires it rather than having to manually charge it, but you don't have to if you don't want. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to watch episode 2 and also episode 3. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons and also the bell notification icon so you get notified of the other episodes coming up. Take care and bye for now.